Hello, my name is Rachel, and I am speaking with Juno-winning jazz musician Kelly Lee Evans. Kelly Lee won her Juno in 2011 for Best Vocal Jazz Album of the Year for her album Nina. She has toured internationally, and her latest album, Come On, is streaming everywhere. Welcome, Kelly Lee. Oh, hello. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me, Rachel. Thank you for joining us today. So I'd love to just jump right in and talk about uh, the last, your last few years. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it was in 2013 when uh, your journey with reacquainting yourself with your own health started because you were electrocuted in your home during a lightning storm. Can you share some of your experiences surrounding that incident? Sure. Um, I can just talk about the actual thing that happened. At first, we were um, living in the country, and I was washing the dishes during a lightning storm, a really big one. I know what I can remember is it was the loudest storm I'd been in, so we could tell that it was close by. And um, I was just always busy, like always doing, doing, doing. I still have that. Um, and I... I knew I should have, I didn't, like, I didn't really know. Like, I didn't know that you shouldn't be around water during a lightning storm. I had never heard that. And if somebody had told us that, I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> um, and I tell this story, it's crazy, but I heard a voice and it said, Kelly Lee, um, go and sit on the couch. I did not do that. I was just like, oh, it's fine. And I kept pushing the water from the counter into the sink. And that was the moment that the lightning hit the, the roof. We had a big steel roof. And uh, it came down through the pipes, up through the, um, the metal that I was touching of the sink and up through my body. And I, like, I'd like to tell people my life changed forever. But it was like, it was something where I, it's not like, you know, you get hit by a car and you know you got hit by a car. <laughs> I mean, like I knew I got hit by lightning, but it wasn't an obvious result i just walked off i remember throwing the sponge and walking to my room and my family all around me was like are you okay are you okay and i just said i'm going to bed and i slept for 12 hours and when i woke up like just nothing in my body felt the same and it never really has felt the same you know so that was the experience um i can't even remember the dates because my memory's just shot ever since then um but it was a uh, it was, yeah, it was a shocking experience. <laughs> the pun is there. You have to make it. You do. You do. Wow. So when um, this happened, you were told to take some time off by doctors? Yeah, but I think, like, I didn't. Like, I went right back on the road the next week. I had a tour. Um, and I felt like my... My mindset was like, as long as I can keep singing, I'm going to keep doing. And I was trying to like, like, trying to pull like my leg along with me. Like one side of my body was just atrophying. It felt like, you know, I had this side of my face was falling. This eye like, felt like the strain and trying to close you know, close it and my hands were twisting in just like my body was like, just, I don't really even understand fully what was going on. And I would have loved to take a break, but we didn't have any money to do that. And I didn't think that I could survive without working. And I, as a musician, I had all these plans about how my life was going to be. We had this tour. I was going to be opening for like John Legend. I, you know, I had all this like stuff happening and like the last thing I needed to do was to take a break. Who's going to put food in the fridge? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I didn't, I did not listen. I just kept going and people pushed me in my wheelchair and I couldn't hold my microphone, but I could sing. Couldn't remember, uh, new lyrics. I could remember old lyrics. I could not hold my a pen to sign autographs um could barely have a clear conversation <laughs> but I could sing and so for you it was as long as you can do this one thing that's integral to your career and if I'm not mistaken your whole identity then you were going to continue that's that's the mentality that I had at the time mm -hmm. you know and 
I feel like I'm sure I would not do it any differently. Like, you know, because I know who I was back then. Like that person, that's all she knew how to do. And I'm learning to be a different person as the years continue. And it's still like, it's, it's a daily, it's a daily struggle <laughs> to, um, to, to learn how to not, to, to stop, to stop and to listen to your body. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's something as a society, a lot of people struggle with is finding that line. Yeah. Um, at any point, I mean, after those first concerts, did you did, did you find a line where you said, I need to go home? I need to be I, off stage? I didn't find it. I didn't find it. My body found it for me. You know, like um, near the end of the day, I would start to slur. I could feel like my brain was shutting down and I couldn't piece like ideas together or words together. So it was like every day I was just like, okay, <laughs> all right. You know, like I guess like sometimes I would just like fall asleep, you know, um, my body was ruling me. And that was the first time for me really because I had up to that point always felt like I could just keep pushing, you know, and it's just, it's different when it's your brain, like you can't push. Absolutely. It's totally almost, almost in control of you rather than you being in control of it. And hundred percent, hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. So besides, you mentioned that you were in a wheelchair. Were there any other effects besides the fatigue and the mobility that you experienced? Oh, so many. <laughs> I mean, I found like the memory loss was like so challenging. Um, just processing information, executive functioning. Um, again, like not being able to cut your food or... Um, like just do your basic tasks. Uh, yeah, when you are, when you envision yourself to be a superhero, a super mom, you know, a superwoman, like not like you're doing the best that you can, like you're just doing the best that you can. You're not saying like you're better than people, but you're just like, I'm just, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, I can do that. When you lose that ability, it is incredibly humbling. And my body, um, just did not work and has yet to fully work in the way that it did before that accident. Wow. Well, um, going forward in time to 2015, I mean, you're in recovery from this truly, I feel one in a million incident. And then you got a concussion in 2015. <laughs> You can, can imagine. <laughs> can you tell me a little bit about uh, what you remember from around that time? Oh, well, <laughs> um, I got out of the wheelchair in late, let's see, it was about five, six months, so in October 2013. And um, I was doing like a lot better, you know, and not hugely better, but I was back to being able to walk around and figuring out like how to find that balance. One of the things that really helped me was using, um, like learning to play the bass. And uh, one of my musicians, he uh, was so awesome. He was teaching me how to play like ukulele. And I took that and another musician helped me learn how to play the bass. And it, using my hands on my left hand because my left hand was slower um like i just lost so much dexterity that really helped me with like my my speech and my thinking i found like the days that i did not move my hand in that way i would be slurring and have difficulty with processing so i started to get a lot better and um uh was back, you know, with another album that was supposed to come out and that was set up for October, 2015. I had just come back from another tour in France and I was taking a bath and I stood up in the tub and I fainted and I hit my head against the wall in the bathroom. And it was like everything, it was just like my second, it was my second brain injury. 
and everything kind of just came back the same same uh, symptoms as before so but this time I didn't go into a wheelchair I um I just stayed home because I knew that I needed to rest this time also I actually couldn't get out <laughs> if I'm being totally honest like I had vertigo this time and I could not stand up straight so I was nauseous I had to crawl to go to the bathroom like my this time my body was like we don't care if you think you can still go on tour down <laughs> it was like somebody was just pushing me down um and that lasted a lot longer than um the first injury the first i mean it's just the first brain injury never went away and the second one has just been um like tenacious you know like it's all up in there <laughs> it's sticking around <laughs> it's sticking around it's yeah. sticking around wow that's so emotionally how did you cope with not just the fact that you now had a concussion on top of what you experienced in 2013 but that it was impacting your album release and your career? Good question. I would say that I did not cope well initially. <laughs> um, I was really brokenhearted about it. You know, somebody, um, my, uh, my management team at the time, they sent me the record and CD and like so like let's say they sent it around january 2016 i did not listen to it until the following year i just um uh, i felt a lot of um a lot of sadness about being in bed uh and again it's not like with a brain injury somebody could say well normally take six months to heal and you'll be back and you can you know do this and that again just it wasn't taking as long as like the doctors were saying and it just heals in its own way and it takes its own time and I'm fully aware that I'm still dealing with it now so I think like that really led to me feeling really sad about this this loss of um this loss of a dream you know I made this CD again lots of plans of big touring um plan a lot of people had invested in it and invested in me and I could not leave my bed and I didn't know when I would be able to. So, so yeah, I think I felt a lot of, a lot of sadness about it, but the tools that came online for me or that I brought online for, with the first injury served me right through to just keep my heart um, happy as much as possible. And that's like, you know, really reaching out to friends and family, um, meditation, yin yoga, I do yoga in bed every morning and that really helps keep my, uh, because if I don't stretch, I still go back into this position. I need to keep everything going. Everything's stretched out and limber. So I do that every morning. Um, journaling, therapy, uh, just self-care. I had to make self-care as important as work in my brain, which was never the case. Work always had precedent before, precedence before, and now I'm learning how to make self-care uh, the most important thing. It's kind of like that thing where they always say, like, oh, put on your life jacket first, or put on your, um, on the airplane, what do they say? Yes. Put on your mask your first. Your oxygen mask, yeah. Yeah, you like to be like, oh, right. But it's true. You know, if you don't have any energy or if you don't have any brain power to, uh, to be of service to yourself, you can't be of service to anybody else. So that's really been, those have been my tools. Great. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tough to learn, but it sounds like even though it's been a long and sometimes difficult road, you've been really committed to swapping that life and work in your mind. Uh, yeah, it's, and I would say even more so now because it, I'm still not better, you know, like my body still reacts to too much activity. And, um, like for instance, like right now this interview is being filmed during the lockdown for the coronavirus. Um, I was on tour. I started back working in 2017 and I started touring 
internationally again back to France in 2019. I still had to take my time to be feeling like I could be on a plane uh, and travel on trains and pull things and carry things. It's, it's, it's really challenging for my body. Um, and I went on tour for 10 days, which was the longest time I've been out since the head injury. And uh, when I got back, we had a 14 day quarantine. And when I finished the quarantine, I went for a walk around the block and my body flared up. And a flare up for me means like constant headaches, just kind of like this pressure going through here and uh, a little bit of difficulty processing information again, um, memory issues, and sometimes my hands go. I used to call them the claws are back. <laughs> um, they're not too bad. They're not too bad this time around, but uh, it's a lot of, it's just been like a constant headache right through my brain and um it's been here since like march 29th and normally i know what to do to get rid of it i need to like do nothing um and i've been trying but it's hard to not do anything you know i think i need another like screen break and that's like how many years later you know mm -hmm. yeah so i don't know i think for a lot of people with post-concussion syndrome um, and a brain injury and that just stays with you for such a long time, it can be really disheartening to know that like you thought you were doing well and you're not doing well now. But I think what's working for me to keep my spirits up is just like, just like one foot after the other, you know, just keep going, keep going, keep uh, that daily self-care routine up and, keep in touch with friends and family just to you just you know you just keep going <laughs> yeah speaking of friends and family i saw that when you had your concussion you had a friend start a fundraiser just to help you keep everything going yeah how did it feel to have that much support from your network i think initially i was super embarrassed to even need help you know, like, yeah, initially I didn't even want her to tell anybody that I needed help because this idea that people could help me was, I mean, like when I first had the first injury, I didn't, I didn't want to tell anybody. I just wanted to like go about my business, but they could see that something was wrong <laughs> when I was pulling up in a wheelchair. <laughs> so I had to say something. And, um, and, uh, then when I recognized that need for help and, and then actually received it, it was like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? Like, what was I thinking? We do nothing alone. Like nothing. I didn't make this scarf. I didn't make this headphone. I didn't make this computer. I didn't grow the food that I'm eating. You know, like there's nothing around me that I've done myself. We like to think we do, but it's impossible. And I feel like, this, this experience, these experiences for me have created a true understanding of how interconnected we all are and how um, just how much I need to acknowledge the dependence that I have on everyone else. Because I was always happy to help other people, but I didn't want to receive. Um, so she gave me that opportunity to to just like sit back and like be taken care of. Not even like I had a choice, like <laughs> I was not allowed to, I couldn't get up. But you know, to have that help was, uh, it lasted us for about a year and I could take care of my, myself and my three kids. And uh, it was such a blessing. That's wonderful. And I can definitely empathize with that feeling of you're always there to help others, but when you need to accept it, it's it's difficult and yeah. <laughs> i'm glad you had such a positive experience uh i guess learning that lesson <laughs> yeah and i'm still i'm still learning it it's uh but i feel like that's that's a that's less of a hard lesson now like yes. i'm actually like much more likely to ask for help and like mm -hmm. and accept it you know 
Absolutely. Yeah. So going back to your uh, rehabilitation and recovery, what kind of things did you do or do you still continue to do in terms of rehabilitation? Well, at the time, if I go back, I did um, some neurophysiotherapy with a, a wonderful organization here in, in Ottawa. And uh, that I think, like, I mean, I did everything, like <laughs> cold laser, acupuncture, um, <laughs> uh, physi like physiotherapy, like different, like bigger movements, physiotherapy, so many different things. But the one, like, so at different stages of the two injuries, but the one that got me out of my wheelchair was the neurophysiotherapy, which worked on using myofascial release and I think a little bit of craniosacral. And it was just like really small movements. And because I couldn't pull a band and do those things, like those things just, I could feel like my brain was just like, couldn't handle that kind of action activity and uh i can still remember the physiotherapist like walking me up and down the the um the hallway i hated that hallway <laughs> where i'd have to get out of the wheelchair and she would walk with me trying to figure out how to get my brain to remember how to do that again and there was this weird thing where she she put her hands on both sides of my hips and like in certain spots and she walked behind me and I felt like a doll, like all of a sudden I could straighten up and I could walk and then she moved her hands and I collapsed again. It was amazing to see the power of the brain, you know, and she was like, that's just like, it's helping your body remember that it knows how to walk, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, we did like a few months of that. And, and what was amazing was there was another lady there with, um, and I, don't, I really don't know what she had. I think she had cerebral palsy. And we both came in in wheelchairs uh, at around the same time. I think she was going definitely longer than I had. But I remember she was there at my first appointment. And at one of my last appointments, she was walking down, up and down the hall, too. It was just, it was pretty amazing to see, like, the work that um, this this, um, this this office did, you know, and these, this therapist did for me. And she, Susan Rotonja, I'm so thankful to her. <laughs> but, um but yeah, so that was like the one that really got me, I think. And definitely, I think the musical, like using my bass um, was really helpful as well. And I mean, I did vision therapy. I did, I've tried so many different things. Uh, I can't even remember everything. Uh, meditation, uh, mindfulness, <laughs> uh, through, the, through the rehab center, um, went, came down to St. John's Rehab to, to consult as well uh, in Toronto, just like so many different things. I, I almost can't remember. I remember somebody saying, you should keep this all. Like, yeah, people saying, you should document everything. It's like, yeah, I just kind of want to feel better. <laughs> I don't want a project, <laughs> you know? And it's funny, like, just even when you say that, like, I was so lucky, like I had friends who would take me to all of these appointments and sit with me and be my brains at these appointments because you would go to the doctors or the, ne the neurologists and the different um, therapy sessions and not know what they were talking about or not remember what they had said. You know, you needed to have a brain that came with you to help you so that you could process that information. I still don't remember half of what happened. That's uh, something that I've found a lot of people have said when they've spoken publicly about brain injury is that uh, they don't remember a lot of the little minutia, but they do remember those milestone moments where yeah. they feel better. <laughs> and yeah. that's, that's the goal is to feel like, better. Yeah, I can still remember. And, um, whew, and a couple years later, I was speaking at... I think, gosh, I can't, I wish I could remember the name of the organization, but it was at a brain injury, uh, I think the BIA, I'm not sure, but it was here in Ottawa. And my physiotherapist, Sue, was there, and I just burst into tears because uh, I just remembered, like, how much she'd helped me. What had happened was, like, I was lying in bed, you know, still sick, and my friend was in Toronto, and she was like, how can I help her? So she, she called around to all these different physiotherapists, and when they just, she described to them how, what I would, what was going through, so they were like, we can't help her. She needs somebody, like, for 
for my new like my new new movements like she's not she doesn't need to be taken through like big things you know so mm-hmm. they suggested this neurophysiotherapist and that was like the was awesome that's yeah. great it's nice yeah. that that match was made yeah and I know for everybody it's something different you know like that's the other thing like as soon I'm public a public person so you know when people hear an interview they're calling with like all these great ideas like there's this chamber you could go into and there's all this and this is like basically nothing that I did was free you know nothing and even like I was when I went to the hospital uh the emerge so that would be like guess May 2013 I didn't like even receive my appointment to see my physiotherapist, not physiotherapist, my neurologist, till July. (laughs) That's the first neurologist, who was just like, there's no pill you can take to feel better. You just have to like, you know, wait. And then the next appointment, I guess she set up appointment with the rehab center. And I didn't get that 18 months later they wrote me to say that I could get an appointment in nine months. A long process. It's a huge process. And if you're living in it, it's like, <laughs> you know, by the time you see them, it's almost three months later, three years later, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. It's like, I don't, I don't know what the best thing for people is, but I just know that like that money that was, given to me like you know from my friend Amanda Martinez's work um outreaching to everybody that paid for all of those different practitioners to help in some way and everybody every time I left something I felt even it was just like a tiny bit better it was I was ahead you know that's great do you ever look back now to where you were at the beginning of your journey and it kind of hits you how far you've come Mm, I guess like when at interviews like this you know like I can still remember um just being in bed this is after the first ac- the first accident and then you would like sleep but you don't like in your sleep you're just like yourself you know you're not a person I'm not like I don't have a wheelchair in my brain yeah. <laughs> you know and uh getting up out of trying to get out of bed and swinging my legs over and t- standing and falling because just like oh I forgot I can't walk <laughs> it's like oh uh, you know it's just like I, I couldn't hold my my weight um there's things like that where you you think back oh yeah I mean it's times like now when you listen and you answer these questions where you're forced to think back and even the fact that I can't remember so much of it is, uh, is interesting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think that's what keeps me happy. <laughs> like not having a good memory. <laughs> Always forget. being able to just focus on the next day. That's all I got. Yeah. You know, I, I, sometimes I don't even like worry too much about the next day. You know, I just, I do make my, my schedules like that. I, I kind of set them up. I, I've had to learn how to create my own, my own mini assistant around me with my, um, with my calendar and all of my, all of its uh, reminders. Cause otherwise I don't remember like what I'm supposed to do like fully. So it keeps me on track. That's good. It's good that you have something that's working for you. Yeah. Executive functioning still is an issue for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, going back to, you mentioned that you had toured earlier this year, and that was for your album, Come On, which you was actually re-released and released for the first time here in Canada in, I think it was 2017? That's right. How did that feel? I know you said it was really difficult at first to listen to to it, it, but when it was re-released and you kind of got to live through that yeah Um, how did that feel yeah it was great because it was like two years later and it's funny because like so many people were initially like oh but you know it's not new it's like well it's new to me (laughs) you know it wasn't it um it wasn't newly made but I never had gotten a chance to to tour it to play the music and I 
I had a blast. I had a blast. It was so um, lovely to be back on the road making music. Uh, I wasn't able to tour at first with drums. I had to, I was just too loud and it was really, the lights were super bright and sensitive. So I had to be careful in the initial stages, a lot of earplugs and, but I slowly started to build up my tolerance to all that again. And uh, it was just great. It was nice to be back. Did you have any nerves or uh, I'll say fear when you stepped back on the stage in those oh, first yeah. few times? <laughs> so my first, my first, 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 first thing was uh, singing for the Junos. And I had said, oh, you know, I'll sing the anthem uh, for Junos because the Junos came to Ottawa. And I, um, I was, it was like my first time performing and I get out there on the ice, it's at Lansdowne and there's just tons of people, it's packed. And I, I'm just like so shaky and scared, you know, it's acapella, I had a cold. My first time singing and I had chosen to sing without any accompaniment <laughs> in front of like thousands of people, <sighs> only me. <laughs> and um, I get there and I step out onto the carpet that's on the ice and I was like, oh, right, I know how to do this. <laughs> you know, it was just this moment where it kind of clicked in. Like, this is actually what my job was, you know? Like, it's not, this is not a big deal. Like, I know how to do this. And it was such a, a wonderful, like, just, like, it's just, um, it was like riding a bike. It's like, you know how to do this? All right, okay, we'll be okay. And it went, it went well. That's awesome. It must have felt so good after being like, oh, yeah, everything just kind of came back to you. It did. And then, and then like from that point on, like started to con like at the Juno's uh, after party, uh, ended up singing with um, Jim Cuddy and his band. Wow. Um, and then somebody else came up and, you know, asked if I could, the Cooper brothers asked if I could perform in their uh, show. They had a CD release coming up and I, so like those little things helped kind of pull me out of my shell. And then I could start making calls to say, you know what? I think I'm ready to try this again. I, I didn't die. You know, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't die. And um, like when I, st when I tried, so I think I could go a little further. Uh, and I think everything's been just like a step, even like that first plane ride to France, I was like, oh my God, is this gonna be okay? And it, I didn't die. So, so, so far, I'm kind of going with that for all new adventures. It's like, just like stepping out with my foot. Okay, I didn't die. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. kind of taking it, as you said earlier, just one foot in front of the other. Yeah. yeah. So my final question for you today is, do you have any advice for Canadians who are currently coping with the effects of brain injury? slow down. <laughs> and, if, and if you can't slow down, stop. That's what somebody told me a couple of days ago. And I was like, oh, why am I only hearing this now? You know, I think I, I have this weird, like, desire to keep pushing through, like, the pain I'm feeling, like, to try to get something done. And that just never works, you know? Um, I had a huge plan for today that um i wanted to get through and i ended up waking up super early and uh i had a bunch of stuff i've done and after i finish this call i'm gonna go make lunch and i'm gonna take a break for the day and i think like i know people tried to tell me to slow down you know after the injury and but i kept trying to push in any way i could you know and i definitely think that that was detrimental to my recovery. So I would say slow down and take care of yourself. I think that's the self-care is like so huge. Yeah, so slow down and take care of yourself. And if you can't slow down, just stop. That is fantastic advice. Thank you so much for joining us today, Kelly Lee. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> I really, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to other people just like me, like-minded people. <laughs> I love that, like-minded people. Well, it was my pleasure. 
And for more information about acquired brain injury or to find your local brain injury association, visit www.braininjurycanada.ca.